My mom used to take me on walks after she and her boyfriend fought when I was a kid. We'd walk around our little town and eventually wander out to the park at the edge of town. Those walks were one of the few pleasant memories of my childhood. My infantile memory remembers the idyllic summers walking at twilight, with crickets singing all around us like they were scoring a childhood that was less traumatic. The odd thing is, I can't remember the weather or the season of the day my mom disappeared. All I can remember is the carousel. We came upon it at the end of town, right up against the start of the woods. The carousel's whimsical music drifted out from its ceramic horses and chariots. It was just like any carousel you've ever seen at a fair or amusement park. Classic ceramic horses and sleighs, bulb lights, mirrored walls. Except the thing was sitting in an empty field next to the woods. I begged my mom to let us take a ride. I still feel guilty about that. The carousel slowed when we approached. I found a white horse with a gold saddle. My mom jumped onto a horse right next to me. The last thing I remember of my mom was seeing her long red hair flowing in the wind of the carousel. Her mouth open, smiling and laughing as the thing picked up speed. It was like the thing had completely washed away the hysterical fight I had just heard her have. I looked ahead to see the other horses and carriages bobbing up and down in that carousel rhythm. Then, I looked back to my mom's horse, and she was gone. I tried to climb down off the horse, but couldn't. It was too high, and the speed of the carousel got faster and faster. I leapt off the horse and got off the carousel. It took me a second to recover from the crash. I looked back to the carousel once I did. It was gone. I was alone in the woods. I waited in the field where the carousel was until dark. Neither my mom or the carousel ever reappeared. I never saw her again. I told the police and every adult I could talk about what happened with the carousel. No one believed me. My mom was defined as missing. It was assumed she either ran away or was murdered and just never found. She was just another troubled woman in a small town who slipped between the cracks. No one cared, except for me. My foster care upbringing was what do you think it was. Sad, chaotic, and damaged. Yet, I made it through, and put together a rather normal life. I had a good job, my own house, a dog, and was happy in my late twenties. Then... One night, I decided to Google carousels and people going missing. I ended up on Reddit and found threads of people talking about people they knew going missing after finding a carousel in a strange location. Then the carousel disappeared, and the person never came back. It was a phenomenon all over the world. There was an online community of people who tried to track the carousels. If they were close enough, people would go out and try to find them, but they would almost always disappear before someone got there. I got to know everyone in the group. They were all people like me who had lost loved ones to the carousels. The only thing that kept most of us sane was the group, sharing our experiences and clues to who, what, when, where, and why was going on with the carousels. I got especially close with Ian, a man my age from Portland whose fiancé was taken by a carousel a few years before. He had a giant tattoo of a carousel on his arm. He wore a necklace with horse pendants on it. We didn't live far away from each other, so we met in person a few times. We bonded over the similarities of our loss and the angst inside us. We started hanging out almost every weekend, getting drunk together and airing our sorrows, it made me feel better to have someone to talk to who could truly understand my pain. Ian was just so much like me. He even shared song lyrics to the name of which I can't remember that I feel like both summed us up. Your composure is so greater and you hold yourself so well. Inside you cling to pieces of a broken carousel. We'd blast the song and sing the line out with all the strength of our lungs, but we'd be so blackout drunk I couldn't remember what the song even was. 
I think my chaotic upbringing and laser focus on just succeeding in life and finding stability prevented me from truly making friends. It sounds pathetic, but even though Ian and I had only hung out a handful of times, he had become my best friend. And it felt great. It hurts me to go too much more into my friendship with Ian. He was like the big brother I wished I had. The perfect way to sum up our dynamic was something that still sends tingles down my spine. I told Ian one night that one thing I remember my mom doing was when I was very young and scared of the dark and my bedroom and going to bed. She would wheel a TV into the hallway outside my bedroom and play old Nintendo games she loved from her old upbringing until I fell asleep. That old Mario soundtrack still soothes me like nothing else. One night, after I talked about struggling to sleep again, feeling scared of something, Ian showed up that weekend with his PlayStation and set it up in my living room outside of my room and played into the night. He came back during the week and did the same thing for a few nights. He even played old Mario games to help soothe me. A carousel was spotted near me a few months into me joining the group. Ian and I drove out to it in the middle of the night. A few of the other members of the group were close enough to join as well. We found the carousel spinning and singing its whimsical song out into the world as the sun rose into a wheat field. We ran out to the carousel and jumped on. The carousel revved up at incredible speed and pretty soon we were spinning so fast it was almost impossible to even hold on. My mind started to go into a trance. I started to blank and just spun, and deep and dark thoughts crippled my mind. I suddenly wanted to stay on the carousel. I wanted it to spin me around forever. My life was cold and sad anyway. I let go of the pole I was hanging on to and let the carousel just take over. I was lost in the spin for a few moments. Then I felt my arm get yanked away. I found myself on the ground next to the carousel. Well, where the carousel was. It was gone. The other members of the group had pulled me out. They said they saw me in a trance and yanked me out just before the carousel disappeared. One of us did not get out, though. Ian. The group stayed in the field where the carousel was, dejected and praying Ian would come out. But he didn't. I was the last there, until the property owner called the police. Finally, I left. Broken. I couldn't even process losing Ian. Eventually, though, just like with my mom, I went on with my life. Then, one night, I came home and found something on the doormat of my front door. A little silver horse. One of the ones from Ian's necklace. Ian was still out there. Ian showed up at my house one night. I hugged him tight. Then I had to know what happened. He wasn't sure how it happened, but he knew what happened and knew what the carousels were now. According to him, the carousels were a trick from hell. They came up from underground as a way to lure people down into the devil's playground. Ian said he found out when he got taken down there. What the carousel did is by spinning you into a trance and injecting your brain with your negative and hopeless thoughts. It got you to stay on it and then pulled you underground to hell. He said the carousels prey on the hopeless. They can feel it in the air, and that's why they pop up in random places. A particular piece of Ian's monologue that he laid on me with wet eyes stuck with me. You know how, like, a carousel, you always associate it with positive. Fairs, carnivals, it's bright and shiny. But if you look closely, nothing's what it seems. Look at the horses and their crooked, stuck smiles. The mirrored glass. It's only magical if you like what you see in the reflection. Half the lights are always busted and burnt out. And the music. It's songs written by faceless, nameless people who died eons ago. You know. Ian explained. Sure, but how did he get out? He fought. 
He got sucked down for a few minutes, but he kept fighting the hopeless and negative thoughts and was able to pull himself out. I'm not sure if I believed him. He certainly seemed hopeless and negative sitting on the floor of my apartment. Something was off about Ian. He wasn't himself anymore. He seemed high, like he wasn't really there. I changed the subject and just talked to him about life for the rest of the night. I got the feeling I might never see him again. He looked weak, like he could barely keep himself upright. I could hardly look at him. I reminded him that night he left his PlayStation there last time he was over, hoping he might stop and play. He gave me the weakest hug I had ever felt, and walked out without his game console. A few months later, a carousel was spotted not far from my home. I jetted out there as fast as I could. I found the carousel out on the edge of some rocks on a lonely beach, calling to me at dusk. I ended up on the carousel. I could hardly even remember doing it. The carousel spun me, and I felt my brain slip into that familiar trance. I started thinking about that day when it took my mom. I felt my body become weightless. I saw the world around me spin into nothing but darkness. I felt everything around me plummet. I could only feel air all around me. Then I heard a familiar voice I hadn't heard in a lifetime. My mom's soft drawl coming out of the ether. Where did you go? The world around me turns to light, and a setting started to come into focus. I heard the sound of crickets backing my mom's voice as I was nearly blinded by the incoming light. Will you come home? The world came back into focus when my mom finished her question. We were back in that field where the carousel had been, but no carousel. I wanted to jump into her arms. I was also very wary. What if Ian was right? Was this some kind of sinister trick? The devil's charade. I felt her hold onto my hand, and I watched the world all around us start to morph again, starting to swirl and move around in circles like we were on the carousel again. Time passed. I couldn't tell if it was five seconds or five hours. I felt a rush and got my breath back. I was back on the carousel. I looked to the mirrored wall to my left and saw myself, four years old again, perched up on that white horse. Then I looked to my right and saw my mom standing out there in the field, wearing the same dress she was that day. The next move was obvious. I got off of the carousel and walked into my mom's waiting arms. Now, you're probably wondering where I was at this point. I existed at the age of four, but I had the wisdom and mental capabilities of someone who had lived for 29 years already. Everyone thought I was a genius. Yet, I felt I couldn't stay. It didn't feel right. I felt like a visitor. I was living in the past. I didn't even have the internet. After a few months, I had to go. I felt my mom could sense it. She spent as much time with me as possible, squeezed me a little harder. I made sure to say goodbye to my mom this time. We shared a great night. I thought about bringing up the carousel, if she was aware of everything that was happening. I resisted the urge. I didn't want to ruin the beautiful cake that was our exchange in this little slice of pleasant reality. Then, I snuck out in the middle of the night. The carousel was at the edge of town, waiting for me. The carousel brought me back to my original reality. I feel like I was finally able to process some of the pain of the 25 years before my time back on the carousel. I wouldn't say I was happy. I was content. I told the carousel group all about what happened, that I would need some time away. Then, I started to itch. I started monitoring where the carousels were, waiting to find one near me. And I found one. I made it to the carousel in time. It was tucked into an abandoned industrial yard. The difference this time was the carousel wasn't running. It was stopped and dark. 
I was barely able to see it at night. I kept my distance, not liking that it was dark and looking broken down. Then, I saw someone walk out from the carousel, a shadowy figure. The lights of the carousel flickered on for a moment as they stepped down off the ride. In the flash of lights of the carousel, I saw it was my mom. My mom looked the same as she did when I last saw her, before I rode that carousel out of her world. Just seeing her was enough to put a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach. We hugged in front of the carousel, and I kept an eye on the ride, still unnerved by it sitting there, dead, dark, and quiet. It felt like there was some kind of danger in the air that I could feel. Something was off. This was confirmed by how light my mom's hug was. I could sense she was in a hurry. Her body was tight and tense. What's wrong? I asked, as I saw tears in her eyes. Something is following me. My mom pushed through her emotions to get the words out. It showed up after you showed back up, and now it won't leave me alone. What is it something? I asked. My racing thoughts were cut off by a mechanical chug. I looked over to see the carousel coming to life next to us, its lights flickering alive and lighting up the yard. I stared at the carousel as it picked up speed. I was quickly mesmerized and frozen in my stance. I watched as something else started to come to life on the machine, the silhouettes of a man, someone tall, someone moving right at us. They were off of the carousel and in the gravel next to us rather quickly. I felt my mom tug at my arm and pull me away, breaking me out of my frozen trance, but not before I got a good look at who had come off the carousel. It looked like Ian, but it wasn't him. It was a young man, similar vibe, dark hair, dark features, tattoos, but taller, and the tattoos were different. There was something dark and tragic that radiated out of him. I could feel it from twenty yards away. He didn't mean well. I ran out of the industrial yard and my mom followed. We were at the edge and out of breath before I looked over my shoulder. The man with the dark aura was right behind us. He reached out for us as I struggled to get the door which led out of the yard open. I looked at his hand and was mesmerized. His skin radiated with a bright yellow light, like that of the bulbs on a carousel. I looked into his eyes and watched his pupils spin into a hypnotizing lull. It was like he was a human carousel. I was almost sucked in again. My mom pulled me through. My mom got us out of the yard and into my car. I got the thing fired up and tore out of there and into the night. I got us further down the road. Don't go home, my mom asked. He'll follow. Where do we go? I asked back. Let's just drive until we get too tired, my mom suggested. I did just what she said, and my mom explained what was happening as we went. Ian had been right. The carousel took you down. My mom never said hell, just somewhere you didn't want to be. Darkness. And it never stopped. It multiplied. It was a relentless evil. And she had fallen prey. She hoped I wouldn't, too. But I had gone through that day and went back and found my mom. We had some light. We had good days. What was the deal with that? What my mom said stuck with me. A carousel is what you want it to be. The speed can be too fast or too slow, depending on who you are. It can be boring. It can be fun. It can be disorienting. But it's up to you to make it what you want. It's slow enough you can get off whenever you want, but only with care. If you come in with bad vibes, it can make you sick. If you come in happy, it can make you happier. My mom explained. So, what was it for you? I asked. I was lost when I got on that carousel, 
I didn't know what it was, and it took me places I won't ever talk to you about. It completely changed who I was, but I also had a hope that someday it would rotate back to you. No matter how fast or dark that carousel ride got. My mom said, and then looked over at me with haunting eyes. Then why can't you stay? I asked. Because that darkness will always follow me. I just can't shake it. I'm sorry. My mom answered. My mom further explained she was horrified when I showed up in her reality, knowing it meant I had gone through a carousel, but it was too late at that point. She knew she'd eventually have to protect me like this, so she just tried to make the most of that time before I ducked out of it. I was also lucky my mom was protecting me while I was on my ride, and off it as well. My mom explained this wasn't the first time she came out of a carousel to help me. The dark figures inside had looked for me before, came out, and tried to lure me down, but my mom had followed them out and kept them from me. I could feel it. I thought of times over the years where I felt like I could feel my mom was somewhere near. One time I thought I heard her voice outside of the door of my bathroom. I think it was really her, protecting me. And now she was here, doing it again. What was she protecting me from, though? Those that used the carousel to transport and bring back people just like me. They knew there were people who were trying to find their loved ones they lost to the carousels. They knew we were easy targets. That's who was after us right now, and the only way to get them to stop was to wait them out. They could only be out from the carousel for so long before they had to go back. There was no specific time limit, but they could feel when they needed to get back and would eventually retreat. I saw headlights move into the rearview mirror. I didn't have time to ask my mom. I could feel it was him. The light raced up behind us, even though I had the pedal of my old Geo Metro floored. I felt my mom's hand reach over and rest softly on my right hand on the wheel. I looked over and saw tears streaming down her cheeks. Then, I followed those wet eyes out to a field next to us, way off in the distance. I could see the lights of a carousel shining. I felt my mom's hand squeeze mine just a little tighter. I'll have to be back someday, my mom said, before I heard the passenger side door click open. I looked over and watched my mom jump out of the car. I had to be going at least 80 miles an hour. I saw her rolling in the near darkness for just a moment before I looked back in front of me. Every molecule in my body wanted to slam on the brakes and go help her, except the ones in my brain. They knew that was suicide. Instead, I looked out at the carousel, much closer now. Then, I looked back in the rearview mirror and saw those headlights behind me much further away. The only thing I was left with was the faint sound of the carousel tickling my ear as I drove away into the night. Months have gone by since the last incident with a carousel and my mom. I've intentionally ignored trying to find anything about them online. I'm just living my life now. I try not to even think of it sometimes, but sometimes there's no way to avoid it. I actually sat down today to finish writing this because I was on a walk in my neighborhood on a perfect spring day. I heard the faint sound of carousel music getting closer as I walked up the street. I couldn't help but pursue it, moving swifter than I should have. I wondered if I was going to see my mom, see the dark young man who wanted to suck me down with him. I did not. What I found was an ice cream truck, broadcasting out its melodic tune into the beautiful day. I laughed wholeheartedly for the first time in quite a while. I smiled and walked away. <laughs>